right, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. And our third part in the series on how to install Jake brakes on an A-block cat, which has proved to have been quite a project. This will be the, the third Saturday that I've been working on putting these things on. So picking up where I left off in the last episode, we'll finish getting the, the Jake heads on there. We'll put all the risers on. I got the valve covers painted, so we'll be able to, to button that all up. There's a few more adjustments and settings that I need to do there. And then once that's done, gonna move on to installing turbo that one of the awesome fans out there, Patrick, sent me. It's a, it's a new used turbo, but it seems to be turning a lot nicer and smoother than the, the one that I took out of there. So, so that should work well. Throw a little bit of, of high heat paint on the, on the turbine side and clean up the gaskets there and a couple bolts I still gotta hammer out. But once that's done, we can mount that on the truck. And then I've also got an idea for cleaning all the, the scale and rust off the lower half of the, of the engine there. So if you recall, I got one of those air hammers a couple episodes ago. And I noticed when I was wandering around Princess Auto that they've got a needle scaler attachment. So I can use that and hopefully that'll hammer off all the rust and then we'll finish painting up the, uh, the engine, that, that beautiful Matterhorn white. And then we can call it a wrap, I think, on the engine and then start working on other stuff. We'll see how far we get on this Saturday. So like I always say, let's talk more work. A lot of good times, Bubbles. A lot of horrors, a lot of truck driving music, a lot of goddamn old black and greasy steaks and hot hamburger sandwiches with mashed potatoes and side of fries, gravy, and apple pie, and ice cream on the side, coffee, two cream and two sugar, wash her all down with a bit of liquor on the yeah, road, boys. Yeah. All right. Last week I got stalled out right at the end of the day because I was missing these little O-rings. So I was able to get over to finning and get the uh, and get the right ones. So we'll just swap these out of here. Again, the manual is recommending that each time you pull the Jake heads off, you put you put new ones on. So I figure I'll heed their warning. This is just uh, a port that feeds oil. Well, it comes up through the center of this and it feeds it into the uh, into the jake head so i figure we better have a good seal there so we want these jakes to work after all this all this effort oh of course you fall down yeah look at that this one was actually well that might have been me taking it off too but it feels very very solid and it's been uh flattened out as well so I think it's a good idea. We're replacing with a nice, a nice new one. Easy fix. Okay, so now we can put the, the Jake heads back on there. And the nice thing is, is they've, they're kind of mistake proofing this where they've got the front housing and the back housing. So it actually points to the forward of the engine. Something like that. Okay, so next, what happens is we need to take some measurements here and we actually gotta shim, put shims underneath these studs here to get the, to get the proper clearance for again, when the solenoids are pounding on the exhaust valves when the jake's engaged. So I'll take another look at the manual and we'll, we'll figure out how to do that. All right, so the, the instructions read to just put these front bolts in and give them a little, just a snug. They want 10 foot pounds. My smaller torque wrench only goes down to 25. So we're just going to estimate that's probably 10 there. What they're trying to do, I think is just to, to tip, 
the Jake assembly and lift it off of the back there. And then what I need to do is use the feeler gauges uh, so and get up there and try and get underneath here because there's going to be a gap. And we're going to try and measure that up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put shims in. Well, that's, that's quite a gap. Uh, let's try some of the bigger ones. And then we're going to measure the shims and that way the shims will go in there. And then when I torque these nuts down, this thing is sitting perfectly level to the, uh, to the mounts here. So we'll just keep adding in feeler gauges until we get, until we get that, that gap. Okay, so now I've got all my measurements, 160, 150, 160, and 142 thou for those four studs. So now what we're gonna do, so use a micrometer and we'll go to 142. So there's 100, 10, 20, 30, 41, two. And we'll lock that guy in there. And then what we've got to try and do is find a combination of, of spacers that'll, well, that's not bad. Yeah. That's pretty darn close. So I think that's our 142. So we'll leave that there. And then we've got to find 160. And we'll just continue to work on this until we get all the, the stacks and then we'll go ahead and, and put them on the, underneath the Jake assembly. From Caroline to Alabama, on down that Georgia line, I've seen lots of pretty girls, but there's none as sweet as mine. As I put the miles behind me, Okay, home stretch on the Jakes. So now the last, the last step is to set the slave, set the lash on the slave piston. So there's a, there's a slave piston. When the 12 volts hits the solenoid, it activates each of these slave pistons at the right time to actually run the Jakes. So what you have to do is you have to get 60 thou clearance on each side of these slave piston fingers. Now it's, it's, it's also, connected to the the timing so what the manual is calling for is to set it at top dead center and then you would set one three and five but if you recall at the end of the last episode i had already done that with the with the valves and then i had spun it 360 degrees to set the even so two four and six uh four and six so what we're going to do now is th that's where the engine's still sitting so i can set two four and six now with the 60 thou and then we'll again spin it 360 degrees and then we'll set the uh set the odds so with that we'll do number two first okay and then now they want two feeler gauges which makes sense so 30 20 10 so there's 60 on that one i think i set this one up the same 30, 20, 10. So they want you to set it and put these under each side of those, of the slave piston legs that come down. Okay. So I could use that extra set of hands. Just where we feel some resistance. Something like that. Yeah, I like that. We'll lock that one down. And now number two cylinder should work just fine. Good, I'm learning how to do this. So I haven't set the, the jakes on LBL yet, but now I know how to do it. I'm gonna have practiced on the Duke. So again, two, four, and we'll just do the same thing. And then I won't bore you with spinning the engine all the way around because we've done that multiple times in previous episodes. So just refer to that if you're curious. 
All right, I think that's official. The jakes are on and the jakes are set. So now we're just going to put the risers back on. Keep dirt from falling in the engine there. Clean my fingers for these nice white covers. Can't have those nice covers and use old rusty bolts, so I'm just giving them a quick coat of paint. So while we let those dry, I thought I'd flip over to the turbo. Now I still need to get these studs out of here, so what I'm probably going to do is just zip cut them, and then we'll get the air hammer and see if we can't just pound them out the back way. And then I was also looking at this. This is the, uh, this is the feed of the return. Anyway, it's one of the oil lines for the turbos. Turbo. And Look how corroded it is, it's just something, something awful. So what I might do is tape the ends and then we'll, uh, or plug the ends and then I'll put it in the sandblaster and we'll clean that up because that's just, that's terrible. Man, these old gaskets are sure stuck on here. So I figured since this part is small enough, why not powder coat it black to be a nice accent? Oh, get some power here, Mark. There we go. That's a little too much. Oh, don't touch the metal, Mark. Like that. I'll just give this a toss into the oven. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. Oh yeah, I was going to mention, so I had another uh, batch of stickers made up. So these are the four inch round, these are the twin stick garage, the new logo. And then I got Save the Bears with the, uh, the Hayes Bear on there. I think we all need to do our part to save the old Hayes trucks. And so I've got these, and uh, well, I'm going to do something similar to what I've done in the past. Um, if you're interested in getting one of these stickers, you can contribute to your local food bank. Um, either send me a, a picture of you dropping the food off or a copy of the receipt. Just send it to twinstickgarage at gmail.com. Let me know which sticker you're interested in and I'll, uh, in your mailing address, and I'll happily send you one. And if you don't want to contribute to your local food bank, you can also get these stickers by sending me $5 and I'll let me know which sticker you want. They're five bucks each, including uh, postage and, and all that fun stuff. And again, just send me your mailing address and I'm happy to send you one. Okay, a few more minutes and we should have, we should have that part done. Okay, next I got to try and get these these old bolts out of here. <laughs> yeah, that ain't going anywhere. <sighs> no. Okay. Well, as I mentioned before, I don't have oxyacetylene torches, so I wonder maybe I'll put some weld on there and heat up the bolt, and maybe we can hammer it out. And if that doesn't work, I'll just zip cut them off and use the use the air hammer to get them out of there. All right. Burn it bright. Gotta keep these big wheels rolling. I'm coming home tonight. Ain't got time to shoot the pinball or to get the radar blue. There, finally. Oh. That was unfun. Yeah, everything I could do. I tried every trick in the book and I finally just had to end up drilling it out but okay one down one to go and i'm wasting most of my afternoon here trying to get this swapped out i almost wish i would have just reused the old bolt bolts okay on to the next one gotta keep these big wheels rolling i'm a coming home to you i know my baby's waiting 
the sweetest ever seen. With big blue eyes that sparkle, she's a truck driver's queen. The old air hammer strikes again. With enough persistence, I was able to finally get that one hammer out of there. Oh, can't believe it. Probably spent two hours mucking around with this, but that should work. Okay, I think I'll crack open another Coors, clean this up, and we'll, we'll throw some paint on it. Wow. Smile and towel in the picture on the billboard in the field near the big old highway. Rolling down the highway in my Jimmy hauling freight from Chicago to St. Louis. Lot I see her every day. I double clutch and weasel. Like okay, so back to where I was when I started this morning. Oh, got a little distracted with all those various projects. But now that the turbo's drying. We'll go ahead and mount these guys. Oh, those are, that's not the right bolt. Those are for the Jake's heads. We'll tighten these down and we'll build this. We'll build this up and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, see if we can get the, the old paint cleaned up there and we'll put some of this nice Matterhorn white on this side of the engine before we go ahead and mount the turbo up. You can hardly ever get a girl, look at him, that old Smiling like the girl wearing nothing but a smile and a towel In the picture on the billboard in the field near the big old highway Wow, what a girl wearing nothing but a smile and a towel Whoops! So while I was tightening down the little bolts for the Jake risers I was looking at this going, oh yeah, there's a wire on the inside That needs to be connected to that No biggie. I've also got a new breather on order, but they can't, uh, Cat only comes out with plastic ones now. They aren't made of metal, I guess, so they don't seize on this uh, flange. So it's gonna come in uh, cat yellow. So I'll probably just paint it white as well. Okay, there, easy fix. Okay, so let's try with this power fist needle scaler. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll turn the volume down when I adjust the recording because these things are noisy. So the air hammer just pounds these fingers back and forth, but it's actually quite good supposedly for removing rust. Another junk. So, where'd I put the gun? Okay. Now, how's this work? Just get the screws on like that. <laughs> okay. And we'll see how this works. Probably need some, uh, probably need a breathing mask as well. How much safety? All of it. Well, it does work. We just clean that up in that short amount of time, so I'll just keep picking away at this and clean it up best I can. Loud as hell, but works. You're on the billboard in the field near the big old highway. I 
But it wouldn't take her very long to get gone And someone would pull a dirty trick and take her towel away I slow me give it down to 20 that so many wrecks I It's like shooting a machine gun Yeah, I'm impressed. That's pretty slick. I don't think I would have wanted to do the whole frame like that, but it uh, it works good for it works good for cleaning up the engine bay. Yeah, it gets all the flakes off, and it should be decent to uh, to give it some primer and then paint it the Matterhorn white. Okie doke. Well, we'll keep working away on that. Clean up as much as we can and then lay some paint down. Why not? Oh yeah, and the next time I'm at Princess, I'm gonna grab a handful more of those, those lights. They make, they make good work lights. So I'm thinking I'll tie one on each side and then one up top and maybe one in the front there and just light this whole area up. Good value for 25 bucks. What I'll do now is I'll, I'll touch this up and then we'll put some, some primer down and we'll let that dry and then we can lay in the Matterhorn white. And I'll have to make sure that I, I mask the Jake riser off because we of course don't want to paint that white now that we've already got it black. But. Okay, let's get her done. I see there every day. Calls by the girl wearing nothing but a smile and a towel in the picture on the billboard in the field near the big old highway. I do do you do do. Yeah, it's looking decent. So I thought, why not use white primer instead of gray or black primer? Because obviously we're trying to get to the Matterhorn white. And if you lay down a base of white primer, theoretically it should take less of that overpriced cat paint. Okay, we'll let that dry and then we'll throw the Matterhorn down. Oh, I love the girl wearing nothing but a smile and a towel in the picture on the billboard in the field near the big old highway. Whew. Yeah, that's looking pretty sharp. I have to say, a two-can rebuild, good as new. That yeah, looks good. Okay, now the hoses, they're all uh, old and crusty, so I'm kind of doing this in the reverse. On the Peterbilt, what I did was I changed all the hoses and then I tried to paint it, so that's why I had to use the tin foil to try and cover up all the hoses and the connections. In this case, I'm getting smarter with age. I'm painting the engine first, and then what I'll do is I'll go and replace all the hoses one by one. And then there'll be nice new black hoses with new shiny fittings. So that's why I didn't have to cover anything up. I could just spray around it. Yeah, all right, let's get that turbo mounted. Okay, so here's that cover plate that I powder coated yesterday. Yeah. So we gotta mount that because we need the crossover pipe that goes down to the, the turbo. Yeah, I figured that would look sharp against the white engine. Nice. Okay. Well, I guess this isn't a crossover pipe. It's more of a, a charge pipe from the compressor side of the, of the turbo. Okay, so we'll zip this on here. Man, this white's hard to keep clean with greasy fingers.
Okay. A white diesel engine. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can get that turbo mounted. So you're supposed to put a little bit of fresh oil on these seals. <laughs> oh, this thing's getting heavy. Probably just getting tired. Okay. Something like that. Interesting. How am I gonna? Did the bolts go reverse? I guess we could do it that way. Not those though. Those will have to go the other way. Okay. Well, that'll work to get it on there. <laughs> How am I gonna put the gasket on? Like so. problem okay I think I figured this out so this guy actually turns in here and when you turn it you get a different uh, you get a different angle and I, I couldn't figure it out because the compressor casing on the old turbo is identical to this one so I don't know why it wouldn't line up so I gave it a little twist over and it, it sent it over a bit farther so this might be a few iterations <laughs> We'll see if it gets it close. Yeah, that one's it's not too bad. Oh! Huh. Drop the turbo mark. Come on. <laughs> oh. Another problem. Uh, someone give me a hammer, please. Come on. Stay. Stay. Good turbo. started. <sighs> I don't know about these old trucks. Okay, one turbo in place. <laughs> oh, this has been a, this has been a bit of work. But we got Jake's and we got a turbo that, that turns. So I suppose it was worth all that effort. All right, so all that's left on here is to run the, uh, the oil lines. So this is the, I don't know if it feeds from the bottom or feeds from the top, but there's a feed. I think that's the feed. And then this is the, the return that goes back. So we'll, We'll put those on there. We'll clean up all the, the grease spots and the, the thumbprints. And we're gonna call it an episode. Once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't ever forget, if you got it, the trucker brought it. <laughs>